Hey, reader friends. I wanted to add a fun book to our choice board for February about a very special friendship. The title of the book is Flora and Ulysses, The Illuminated Adventures. The author of the book is Kate DiCamillo, who is the lady that you see smiling at you there. And the illustrator is K.G. Campbell. This is a book that was based on the Newbery award-winning story about 10-year-old Flora, an avid comic book fan. Avid means very, very much so. She was also a self-avowed cynic. That means that she admitted about herself that she wasn't very um, good at trusting other people. Flora generally thought that other people are just selfish and mostly motivated by their own greedy desires. And part of the reason for this is that her parents have recently separated and she's feeling really sad about that and about the fact that um, her parents' marriage may be over. That's really making her feel sad. Well, in the story, after rescuing a squirrel that she names Ulysses, after a high-powered vacuum cleaner, by the way, Flora is amazed to discover that this squirrel possesses unique superhero powers, which take them on an adventure full of really funny complications. Um, this book won the Newbery Award in 2014, and as with many of Kate DiCamillo's stories, they have been made this book has been made into a movie. Yeah, Disney has made this into a movie and it will be streaming on Disney Plus beginning on Friday, February the 19th, which just happens to be my birthday. So I thought if some of you have Disney Plus, you might be interested in watching this movie and I'm planning to watch it on my birthday at home. So um, yeah, maybe that would be a fun thing for you to do too. So I thought to add it to the um, February choice board, a great story of friendship. And it's kind of a long chapter book. It's got 40 something chapters. So I can't read you the whole thing, but I picked out um, enough of the chapters that I think I can give you a really good idea of what the story is about and where it's going. Maybe it'll hook you and you'll want to read the rest of the book on your own. All right, well, the story starts with a neighbor who's getting a birthday present. So let's begin with this cartoon. It says, in the Tickum kitchen, late on a summer afternoon. So it's giving us an idea of the setting right off the bat. Here is the woman of the house, eating crackers, reading poetry, and here comes her husband with a present. See that bow? He says, Ahem. Happy birthday to you. The wife says, what's this, Donald? He says, this is your birthday present. It is a Ulysses Super Suction Multi-Terrain 2000X. Happy birthday. It's a vacuum cleaner. Uh-oh. She doesn't seem real thrilled with this present. It's a Ulysses 2000X, he says. Yep, it's the crown jewel of vacuums. It features an extra long cord so that absolutely no mess, no dirt is ever going to be out of your reach. It's indoor, outdoor. It goes everywhere. It does everything. Goody, she says. You have to try it out. Turn it on. Oh, for heaven's sake, Donald. Please? Hmm. Well, it's nice to get a birthday present, but not necessarily a birthday present that's going to make you have to clean up after everybody. Let's see what she does. Oh, she does try it. There's the on button. Ooh. Sounds kind of loud. Sounds like it may have shocked him a little bit. Knocks over her chair and her book and her crackers. <gasps> and the vacuum cleaner starts sucking everything up. Look at that. There goes his britches. He says, whoa, hey now. There goes her book. There goes her crackers. 
What in the world, Donald? Uh-oh. She does not look thrilled about this. Donald's still trying, though. He says, it's multi-terrain. You should try it outside. <gasps> and it's sucking her right out the door. And that's how it all began. With a vacuum cleaner. Really? Oh, boy. Well, let's see what happens. Chapter 1. A Natural Born Cynic Flora Bell Buckman was in her room at her desk. She was very busy. She was doing two things at once. She was ignoring her mother, and she was also reading a comic book entitled The Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto. Flora! Her mother shouted, what are you doing up there? I'm reading, Flora shouted back. Remember the contract, her mother shouted. Do not forget the contract. At the beginning of summer, in a moment of weakness, Flora had made the mistake of signing a contract that said she would, quote, work to turn her face away from the idiotic hijinks of comic books and toward the bright light of true literature. Quote. Those were the exact words of the contract. They were her mother's words. Flora's mother was a writer. She was divorced and she wrote romance novels. Hmm. Talk about idiotic hijinks. Flora hated romance novels. In fact, she hated romance. I hate romance, said Flora out loud to herself. She liked the way the words sounded. She imagined them floating above her in a comic strip bubble. It was a comforting thing to have words hanging over her head, especially negative words about romance. Flora's mother had often accused Flora of being a natural-born cynic. Flora suspected this was true. She was a natural-born cynic who lived in defiance of contracts. Yep, thought Flora, that's me. She bent her head and went back to reading about the amazing Incandesto. Sounds like a superhero to me. She was interrupted a few minutes later by a very loud noise. It sounded as if a jet paint plane had landed in the Tickham's backyard. What the heck, said Flora. She got up from her desk and looked out the window and saw Mrs. Tickham running around the backyard with a shiny oversized vacuum cleaner. It looked like she was vacuuming the yard. That can't be, thought Flora. Who vacuums their yard? Actually, it didn't look like Mrs. Tickham knew what she was doing. It was more like the vacuum cleaner was in charge. And the vacuum cleaner seemed to be out of its mind or its engine or something. Hmm, a few bolts shy of a load, said Flora out loud. And then she saw that Mrs. Tickham and the vacuum cleaner were headed directly for a squirrel. Oh, hey now, said Flora. She banged on the window. Watch out, she shouted. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. She said the words, and then she had a strange moment of seeing them hanging there over her head. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. Hmm. There is just no predicting what kind of sentences you might say, thought Flora. For instance, I mean, who would ever think you would shout, Hey, you're going to vacuum up that squirrel. It didn't make any difference, though, what word she said. Flora was just too far away. The vacuum cleaner was too loud. And also, whew, clearly it was bent on destruction. This malfeasance must be stopped said Flora in a deep superheroic voice. This malfeasance must be stopped. 
That was what the unassuming janitor, Alfred T. Slipper, always said right before he was transformed into the amazing incandesto and became a towering, crime-fighting pillar of light. Unfortunately, Alfred T. Slipper was not present. I mean, where was incandesto when you needed him? Not that Flora really believed in superheroes, but still. She stood at the window and watched <gasps> as the squirrel was vacuumed up. Poof! Thwomp! Holy bagumba, said Flora. Chapter 2 The Mind of a Squirrel Not much goes on in the mind of a squirrel. Huge portions of what is loosely termed the squirrel brain are given over to one thought, food. The average squirrel cogitation goes something like this. I wonder what there is to eat. This thought is then repeated with small variations. For example, where's the food? Or, man, I sure am hungry. Or, is that piece of food? Or, are there any more pieces of this food? And this thought came eh, six or seven thousand times a day. All of this is to say that when the squirrel in the Tickham's backyard got swallowed up by the Ulysses 2000X, there weren't a lot of terribly profound thoughts going through its head. As for the vacuum cleaner, as it roared toward him, he did not, for instance, think, Here at last is my fate, come to meet me. He did not think, Oh, please give me one more chance and I will be good. Nope. What he thought was, man, I sure am hungry. And then there was a terrible roar and he was sucked right off his feet. At that point, there were no thoughts in his squirrel head. <laughs> Not even thoughts of food. Chapter 3. The Death of a Squirrel Seemingly, Swallowing a squirrel was a bit much, even for the powerful, indomitable, indoor-outdoor Ulysses 2000X. Mrs. Tickham's birthday machine let out an uncertain roar and stuttered to a stop. Mrs. Tickham bent over and looked down at the vacuum cleaner. <gasps> there was a tail sticking out of it. Oh, for heaven's sake, said Mrs. Tickham. What next? She dropped to her knees and gave the tail a tentative tug. She stood. She looked around the yard. Help, she said. I, I think I've killed a squirrel. Chapter 4 A Surprisingly Helpful Cynic Flora ran from her room. She ran down the stairs, and as she ran, she thought, for a cynic, I am a surprisingly helpful person. She went out the back door. Her mother called to her. She said, where are you going, Flora Bell? Flora didn't answer her. She never answered her mother when she called her Flora Bell. Sometimes she didn't answer her mother when she called her just Flora either. Flora ran through the tall grass and cleared the fence between her yard and the Tickums in a single bound. Move out of the way, said Flora. She gave Mrs. Tickham a shove and grabbed hold of the vacuum cleaner. Ooh, it was heavy. She picked it up and shook it. Nothing happened. She shook harder. The squirrel dropped out of the vacuum cleaner and landed with a plop on the grass. Ooh, he didn't look that great. He was missing a lot of fur. Vacuumed off, Flora assumed. His eyelids fluttered. His chest rose and fell and rose again, and then it stopped moving altogether. Flora knelt. She put a finger on the squirrel's chest. At the back of each issue of the Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto, there was a series of bonus comics. One of the Flora's very favorite bonus comics 
was entitled, Terrible Things Can Happen to You. As a cynic, Flora found it wise to be prepared. I mean, who knew what horrible, unpredictable thing could happen to you? Terrible things can happen to you. And the comic detailed what action to take if you inadvertently consumed plastic fruit. This happened more often than you would suppose. Some plastic fruit was extremely realistic looking. Or how to perform the Heimlich maneuver on your elderly Aunt Edith if she choked on a stringy piece of steak at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Or what to do if you were wearing a striped shirt and a swarm of locusts descended. Run. Locusts like stripes. And, of course, how to administer everyone's favorite life-saving technique, CPR. Terrible things can happen to you did not, however, detail exactly how someone was supposed to give CPR to a squirrel. Oh, well, I'll figure it out, said Flora. What will you figure out, said Mrs. Tickham. Flora didn't answer her. Instead, she bent down and put her mouth right on the squirrel's mouth. Oh, it tasted funny. If she were forced to describe it, she would say that it tasted exactly like squirrel. Fuzzy, damp, slightly nutty. Have you lost your mind? said Mrs. Tickham. Flora ignored her. She breathed into the squirrel's mouth. She pushed down on his small chest and she started to count. Chapter 5. The Squirrel Obliges Something strange had happened to the squirrel's brain. Things had gone blank, black, and then into this black blankness there came a light so beautiful, so bright that the squirrel had to look away. A voice spoke to him. What's that? said the squirrel. The light shone brighter. The voice spoke again. Okay, said the squirrel. Y you bet. He wasn't sure what exactly he was agreeing to. But it didn't matter. He was just so happy. He was floating in a great lake of light. And the voice was singing to him. Oh, it was wonderful. It was the best thing ever. <gasps> and then there was this loud noise. The squirrel heard another voice. And this voice was counting. The light receded. Breathe, the new voice shouted. So the squirrel obliged. He took a deep, shuddering breath. And then another and another. The squirrel returned. Chapter 6 In the Event of a Seizure Well, he's breathing, said Mrs. Tickham. Yes, said Flora. He is. She felt a swell of pride. The squirrel rode over onto his stomach. He raised his head. His eyes were glazed. Oh, for heaven's sake, said Mrs. Tickham. Look at him. Oh, she chuckled silently or quietly and she shook her head and then she laughed out loud and she kept laughing and she laughed and she laughed and she laughed. She laughed so hard that she started to shake. Was she having some kind of a fit? Flora tried to remember from the book, Terrible Things Can Happen to You. Did it advise something in the event of a seizure? Hmm. It had something to do with moving the tongue out of the way or stabilizing it with a stick or something. Oh, well, Flora had saved the squirrel's life. She didn't see any reason she couldn't save Mrs. Tickham's tongue. The sun sank a little lower in the sky. Mrs. Tickham continued to laugh hysterically. And Flora Bell Buckman started looking around the Tickham's backyard for a stick. Chapter 7. 
the soul of a squirrel. The squirrel was a little unsteady on his feet. His brain felt larger, roomier. It was as if several doors in the dark room of his self, doors he hadn't even known existed, had suddenly been flung wide. Everything was shot through with meaning, purpose, light. However, the squirrel was still a squirrel. And he was hungry. Whew. Very. All right, let's see. Here's the squirrel looking around, trying to find something yummy. It says, who can say what astonishments are hidden inside the most mundane being? Oh my goodness, that little tiny squirrel is picking up that big, heavy vacuum cleaner. Oh, he's shaking it. Yum, look at all the crackers falling down. Hmm, well, he was hungry. Look at that thing. He's holding it with one little paw. Hmm. Chapter 8, Helpful Information. Flora and Mrs. Tickham noticed at the same time. The, 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 the squirrel, said Flora. The, the, the vacuum cleaner, said Mrs. Tickham. Together they stared at the Ulysses 2000X and at the squirrel who was holding it over his head with one paw. Th 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 that, that can't be, said Mrs. Tickham. The squirrel shook the vacuum cleaner. Th th that can't be, said Mrs. Tickham. You already said that, said Flora. I'm repeating myself? Mm-hmm, you're repeating yourself. Maybe I have a brain tumor, said Mrs. Tickham. It was certainly possible that Mrs. Tickham had a brain tumor. Flora knew from reading the book, Terrible Things Can Happen to You, that a surprising number of people were walking around with tumors in their brains and didn't even know it. I mean, that was the thing about tragedy. It was just sitting there keeping you company waiting, and you had absolutely no idea. This was the kind of helpful information you could get from the comics, if you paid attention. The other kind of information that you absorbed from the regular reading of comic books, most particularly from the regular reading of the illuminated adventures of the amazing Incandesto, was that impossible things happened all the time. For instance, heroes, superheroes, were born of ridiculous and unlikely circumstances. I mean, really? Spider bites? Chemical spills? Planetary dislocation? And, in the case of Albert T. Slipper, from accidental submersion in an industrial-sized vat of cleaning solution called Incandesto. The cleaning professional's hard-working friend. I don't think you have a brain tumor, said Flora, but there might be another explanation. Uh-huh, said Mrs. Tickham. What, what's the other explanation? Have you ever heard of incandesto? What, said Mrs. Tickham. No, who, said Flora. Incandesto is a who. He's a superhero. Right said Mrs. Tickham, and your point is? Flora raised her right hand. She pointed with a single finger at the squirrel. Surely you're not implying, said Mrs. Tickham. The squirrel lowered the vacuum cleaner to the ground. He held himself very still. He considered both of them. His whiskers twitched and trembled. There were cracker crumbs on his head. He was a squirrel. But could he be a superhero too? Alfred T. Slipper was a janitor. Most of the time people looked right past him. Sometimes, often in fact, they treated him with disdain. 
They had no idea of the astonishing acts of heroism, the blinding light contained within his outward humdrum disguise. Only Alfred's parakeet Dolores knew who he was and what he could do. The world will misunderstand him, said Flora. You bet it will, said Mrs. Tickham. Tootie, shouted Mr. Tickham from the back door. Tootie, I'm hungry. Tootie, what a ridiculous name. Flora couldn't resist the urge to say it out loud. Tootie, she said. Tootie Tickham. Listen, Tootie, go inside. Feed your husband. Say nothing to him or anyone else about this. Right, said Tootie. Say nothing, feed my husband. Okay. Right. She began walking slowly toward the house. Mrs. Tickham called out. Uh, Mr. Tickham called out. Are you done vacuuming? What about the Ulysses? Are you just going to leave it sitting out there? Ulysses, whispered Flora. She felt a shiver run from the back of her head to the base of her spine. She might be a natural-born cynic, but she knew the right word when she heard it. Ulysses, she said again. She bent down and held out her hand to the squirrel. Come here, Ulysses, she said. Chapter 9 the whole world on fire. <gasps> she spoke to him. And he understood her. What the girl said was, Ulysses, come here, Ulysses. And without thinking, he moved toward her. It's okay, she said. And he believed her. It was astonishing. Everything was astonishing. The setting sun was illuminating each blade of grass. It was reflecting off the girl's glasses, making a halo of light around the girl's round head, setting the whole world on fire. The squirrel thought, when did things become so beautiful? And if it has been this way all along, how is it that I never noticed before? Listen to me, the girl said. My name is Flora. Your name is Ulysses. Okay, thought the squirrel. She put her hand on him. She picked him up. She cradled him in her left arm. He felt nothing but happiness. Why had he always been so terrified of humans? He couldn't imagine. Well, actually, he could imagine. I mean, there had been that time with the boy and the BB gun. Oof. There had, truthfully, been a lot of incidents with humans, some involving BB guns, some not, and all of them had been violent, terrifying, soul-destroying. But this was a new life, and he was a changed squirrel. He felt spectacular, strong, smart, capable, and also hungry. Oh, he was very, very hungry. Well, boys and girls, that's where we're going to have to stop. What do you think? Good story so far? I think so. All right. Well, if you like it well enough that you'd like me to read a few more chapters for next week, thumbs up, let me know. All right, guys, I hope you have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.